morning. It's been a little wonky this, this, this winter, so it's been touch and go. If you could make it, I'm so glad that you're all here this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in all of it. I ask you now to join me with, in the call to worship on this second Sunday in Lent. It's a responsive reading. Um, respond with a bold print. We come this day hoping to encounter Christ. May we open our hearts to Him. And now I invite you to stand as you are able for a gathering song to God be glory.
we joined the church, I believe, in 2007. And um, there was a period of time in there where we were, you know, church was going through some financial problems, uh, meeting our budget. And um, I felt like the trajectory of the church was like going down as far as participation, and enthusiasm, and leadership. Um, and we were, uh, we had a, a part time pastor at that point, and we had, uh, you know, a pastor that was half time looking at maybe going, or a three quarter time looking at going half time. Uh, and it just, it was a different kind of church than it is today. And then we had a transition to a new pastor, uh, Paula, and I feel like since that time, the trajectory has definitely gone a different direction. And I think it would be hard to argue that this church is going in one direction right now. And it's becoming more and more a vital part of our community. And if you look around at the things that we're doing right now, um, you know, I just read in the paper that the uh, food shelf is moving into town and, and, and having uh, been a volunteer for the food shelf is always kind of a uh, difficult thing to have the food shelf, you know, way out of town, up in the industrial park area, and now it's going to be, uh, you know, right down town and uh, the old uh, thrift store down there. And that'll make it a lot more accessible. And, and, um, and believe it or not, United Church. Maybe didn't have a huge part in that move, but it did definitely have a very solid part in that move. Paula is on the board, and we contribute, you know, we have a couple different fundraisers every year that have substantial contributions to that food shelf. Um, and our third Friday suppers, and there's uh, you know, national night out, you know, we're leaders in a lot of those kinds of things. And, um, and that, I feel really proud to be a part of this church for that reason. And that is, we come here to worship um, as a family, but also we, it's important for us as a family to be part of a church that's also very active in the community. And, and this is a church that takes it to the streets, and I think that's, that's, that's a good thing for a small community like that. And it's not free to do that. It does cost money, and um, so our budget this year is about $152,000, and that's up fair amount from a few years ago and uh, and the main reason is we now have a full-time pastor and um, and with a full-time pastor comes a full-time salary and benefits and all of those kinds of things Paula makes the very bare minimum that the Methodist conference allows us to pay a pastor and um, and that's what we can afford at this point and that's what she's willing to accept um, and, uh, and we also have a staff of people who help take care of the church and Al do the administrative stuff. And, um, and it's all key components to making this church operate and, and move ahead. All right. And so, and you know, being on the finance committee, you know, uh, Casey's done a really good job uh, the last year or so uh, in helping us transition with a new accountant and a new bookkeeping system and all that kind of stuff um, and so uh, you know looking at um, what does it cost to, to run this church and we run a bare bones operation let me tell you that right now you know having been on the budget committee now for a few years and going through that process every year um, there's nothing I mean everything is we look at every penny that we can cut and keep as low as possible. Um, so, as far as giving goes, if we had, so we have about 150 uh, people on the roll, both members and non-members, who are, we would consider active in the church, all right? If 100 of those uh, people gave $126.58 a month uh, to the church, we would meet our budget. All right? And um, the reality is, is that there's maybe uh, 
20 people in the church, maybe a little bit less, that give well over 50% of our budget. And then, and then the rest sort of filters in after that. And, um, and so I guess I'm here today just to, to have everyone take a look at, you know, what you're giving now, if you're giving now, and just really ask yourself, is it possible to maybe give just a little bit more to help us? Right now, we're probably going to be, we're probably not going to meet our budget if we continue on the track that we're going right now. And that, that has actually been the case for the last couple of years, three, three years really. And, um, and luckily for us, in December of each one of those years, we've had someone step forward and give a very substantial contribution to the church to help us meet that budget. And when we brought on uh, Paula, I knew that it would take a few years to get us to a point where we will have a sustainable budget, you know, of people giving in the church. I knew that we would probably run into deficit problems. And, and I think that any organization going through a transition like that can expect that. And I think that we're at a point now, though, that we really should be have making this work. And um, and so anyway, I'm just here today just to ask if, you know, really take a look, what does this church mean to you? And and um, and I know that our family, it would be really our life in two harbors would be completely different without this church. And um, and I suspect that that's the same thing with a lot of people today here. Um, and so uh, I'm just asking, you know, take a look at what you're giving and if you could possibly give just a little bit more. If you're not, if you're under that 126, I can tell you right now, if half the people who are under the $126 mark right now went to $126, we would meet our budget. And so just kind of take a look at that. And, and also I want to make it clear that if you're giving more than that, <laughs> keep giving more than that. <laughs>
silent confession. New life is given to you. You can place your trust in God and follow God's way. God is with you. Amen.
Patrick returned to Ireland in 432 and converted many people to Christianity over the next uh, 26 years. He died on March 17th, 457. So that's more than 1,500 years ago. Or maybe it was four, uh, 493. Records from, from 1,500 years ago are not real good sometimes. Patrick used the shamrock, little brass kind of thing, to teach the Irish people about the Trinity. Shamrock has got three little leaves on it, and the three parts represented God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So Ireland really never did have snakes. But <laughs> the story goes that St. Patrick chased them up of and uh, I was kind of lucky, a bunch of them hatched in Milwaukee a while back, and they made their way up here, and you know, I'm sitting in my living room, so uh, you're in luck. I'll let them migrate.
born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, Alan Bennett once said, life is like a tin of sardines. We are all looking for the key. We have to be a little bit old to get that one. Carl Sandburg once said, Life is like an onion. You peel it off one layer at a time, and sometimes you weep. And Charles Schultz said, My life has no purpose, no direction, no aim, no meaning, and yet I'm happy. I can't figure it out. What am I doing right? Well, these quotes humorously illustrate one of the greatest challenges of life, and that is our inability to fully and finally understand life. Just when you think you have life all figured out, something always comes along that challenges you. It shakes you up, and it makes you realize how unknowable life can be. It's really important that we learn and we grow from new information and experiences, whether it's emotionally or intellectually or spiritually. We have to tap into those throughout our, our, our entire lives. Even when growth means admitting our ignorance. We are, and we must be, lifelong seekers of truth. And to his credit, Nicodemus was just that. He was a spiritual questioner. Nicodemus is whom Jesus converses with in today's Gospel reading. Nicodemus was a leader. He was a leader of the Jews. He was a scholar. He was a Pharisee. And in Jesus' time, the Pharisees, well, they were the good guys. They were moral. They were biblical. They were devoutly religious. They were our kind of people. Now, whether because of this or in spite of this, Somehow, for Nicodemus, that wasn't enough. When he heard the kinds of things that Jesus was doing and saying, even though they contradicted his 
understanding as a Pharisee, Nicodemus was intrigued. And so, by night, under the cover of darkness, Nicodemus came to talk with Jesus. Nicodemus' opening statement to Jesus was really impressive. He said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. But Jesus' Jesus's response sets him back when Jesus answers him and says, very truly I tell you, Nicodemus, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. The author of the book of John makes a bit of a play on words here. The Greek word used is anathen. And that's translated to either again or from above. But most commonly, it means from above. Literally, it means from top to bottom. It's the same word that's used in the 27th chapter of Matthew at Jesus' death, death when the curtain in the temple split Anathon from top to bottom. So Jesus says, Nicodemus, you've got to be born from above, from top to bottom. But Nicodemus, well, he misunderstands. And what he heard was born again. So Nicodemus says, how can anyone be born again after having grown old? Can you enter your mother's womb a second time to be born? Well, to Nicodemus' bewilderment, Jesus answers again, making a play on words, and this time using the word pneuma, which can mean either wind or spirit. So Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit, or pneuma. What is flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Don't be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind, Numa, blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay, so with that being said, do you find it interesting that when Nicodemus asks how, Jesus' response, well, he cites two of the most mysterious and uncontrollable forces in life, birth and wind. If it were a matter of how, if there were a technique or a method, Jesus couldn't have brought up the, any worse examples than birth and wind. So no wonder Nicodemus said to Jesus, well, how can that be? And Jesus says back to him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? We all know that there are some people who want the spiritual life to be rigidly structured. There, there are people who are most comfortable when things are determined to be either or, right or wrong, black or white, with no gray in between. And then there are others for whom the spiritual life is less structured and find it more like listening to music. It flows. There's melodies and harmonies and crescendos and rests. It's like birth or wind, and we're swept away in it. In other words, the only absolute is that there are no absolutes. It's like birth or wind. 
Neither of them are forces that we can control. Jesus might just as well have added, it's a gift, Nicodemus. Just take it and say thank you. In fact, what he said is one of the most famous verses in the Bible. John 3, 16. You know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. In other words, it's a gift, Nicodemus. Don't spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. Just receive it. And that's the way life is. That's the way spiritual life is. It's a mystery. It's like birth and wind. That we can never quite fully or finally comprehend. So as a spiritual seeker, we need to keep ourselves open. We need to be like Nicodemus. We need to be open for new information, to, to change our minds, to maybe turn our way of thinking. We need new experiences to change our lives. We need to be open to things that we can't understand. We need to be open for whatever might come next. And so on any given Sunday, just like Nicodemus in the night, we come here to church to worship and to talk to God. I come with my sermon fully prepared, having spent hours and hours on it. And I admit that there are some Sundays where I feel pretty good about it, if I do say so myself. I think I've had a pretty good sermon prepared. And then, and then somebody comes to me and, and says, with love and compassion, you know what, that just really fell flat. I didn't get it. And then later that same day, I'll get an email from somebody saying, thank you for that sermon. It was just what I needed to hear. I don't know. And on any given Sunday, you might come with pencil and paper ready to write down your three bullet points of wisdom and a choir anthem. And, and then suddenly and mysteriously, the winds of the Spirit blows, and then a new birth, a new realization, an aha moment happens. How can these things be? Well, friends, such is the spiritual life. You don't have to climb mountains to find it. You don't have to seek out holy men to explain it. It's like birth and wind. It's a mystery. Don't try to understand it. Don't try to analyze it. It's a gift given from God. Just receive it and say thank you. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our song of response. Blessed assurance.
we lift up our joys, our concerns, whatever we would like the community of the United Church to pray over. Are there any prayer requests that you'd like to raise up at this time? Roger. Well, one nice little thing, I have new hearing aids that are rechargeable. Roger has new hearing aids that are rechargeable. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> we just because we love. We are all. We're, calling, we're calling them miracle years. The miracle years of Rogers. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. different, the one we love 
and the one we dislike. Help us to love others as you love us, with a zeal for righteousness and a, a passion for peace. May we be moved by your spirit. May our hearts be troubled and stirred when confronted with injustice. May we be inspired to speak bold word, words and do radical acts of love. May we be brave enough to live lives of humility and service. May we follow Jesus in his prophetic zeal and his self-sacrificing passion. God of our lives, while our hearts burn for justice and equality and freedom, we remember to the other struggles of this life, the sickness and death and loss we all must face. Help us to feel your presence in these places of pain and sorrow, even as we celebrate your many blessings. May we be for other signs and instruments of your amazing love. Gracious God, we open our hearts to you this morning. Take who we are and shape us into the people you need us to be. Fill us with your spirit and transform us more and more into the likeness of Christ. Our teacher and our friend and the one we follow, the one through whom we hear your voice. Dear God, hear us now as we pray together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, Lord,
Please join me in the offering prayer. God of salvation, help us to remain connected wholeheartedly to your word, rather than the time of petty worries and fears. You and you alone lead us on a level path. Now we enthusiastically listen for your call in our lives. We praise you for reaching out to us in this moment of offering. So we have a few announcements. First of all, you see that there's an order blank here for Easter flowers. So please fill it out if you would like to sponsor a flower. Um, and then um, I really do want to urge you to attend our community Lenten services. This um, last week was a dumb, uh, that's why I put in the prayer about spring rains because I thought we were going to have to build an ark. But uh, this week um, our Lenten service is going to be here at United. So it's uh, 5.30 is going to be the soup supper and then 6.30 is um, the service. So I encourage you all to come if you are able. Um, I also want to raise up, and we have all this in the bulletin, so we'll bring it home and read it at your leisure, but we are really close to being able to do some major work down in the basement. And um, one of the fun things that we have to raise those funds is Fundly.com. And Casey has um, has put that up. It's um, You just go Fundly.com, right, in United Church, and it should pop up. And if you would like to donate, you can donate there. Um, but we are um, are going to be putting in a new surface, on the, tearing up all the old carpeting and, and putting in a new surface. So we are pretty close to seeing that happen. Again, I encourage you. Um, also, there's some emergency uh, ERT training. Emergency, what is it? Response training. Early response, Early response training. Okay. And um, the United Methodist Church is bringing up a team to do this training. And so, if you have, if you, if it's something something that you would like to do, what that does is it trains you. You get on the list, and then when disasters occur, um, you're contacted and and maybe you would want to go to be a, a first or early responder to um, some of these um, disasters that are popping up every week, it seems. Um, but talk to Mike if you have any questions about that. Um, that's what I have. Are, are there any? Oh, okay, Katya, and then Jan, and then Casey. Okay, and then Mark. <laughs> so we're... Uh, as we were saying, we're doing a lot of things in this church and we have put posters up for almost every single one of them. So I have two posters and I'll be at the back of the church. If you are willing to put up a poster somewhere, that would be wonderful. I mean, two posters actually, or possibly three. We still have a few of the Jesus Be the Soul left. And then we have a preview for our 50th in June. We're putting up flyers for that already, believe it or not. And then also the egg hunt that Jan's organizing coming up in about a month. So please um, just consider it your part of outreach in this church to put up a poster. It makes it really easy if we all do it. I'll be right back there when you're leaving the church. I just want to say that there's potluck next Sunday at the church. Ah, potluck next Sunday? No, no, two weeks. Two weeks. You sure? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Two weeks. Okay, remember that. Put it on your calendar. <laughs> All right. Oh, Casey. Okay, so April 1st, we'll have our women's meeting in Sacramento. And then this Friday from 2 to 6 at the community center, they're having a volunteer celebration event. Um, there's going to be about 16 organizations there from the DAC to Bone Builders to RV. The food shelf is going to be there. And it's where you can walk around and it's going to be door prizes and hot dogs and desserts. And it's going to be really fun. You can walk around and see if there's something you'd like to give your time to donate to. Because sometimes the organizations only need an hour. I mean, even a month, like, or a one-time deal for some of us. And it's if you do 
volunteer to come in and celebrate and get, you know, appreciation for what you do because volunteers are huge on this world. So come two to six at the community center next Friday. Next Friday. All right. All right. So music be the soul April 7th at 3 o'clock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we should just get a billboard up there. We need a big one. Um, but anyway, the, the music is coming along nicely, but we are going to need um, some volunteers to help uh, with fellowship afterwards. We usually have coffee and bars and stuff, and so if anyone is interested, um, Margaret's kind of saved me in the last a few years on that, so I'm trying to get a jump on it this year, so if you're interested in help with that, let me know. Music to feed the soul of the sun. Lenore? We have flowers. These flowers were from Jan Anderson's funeral um, last weekend, and they are beautiful. So, thank you. Kim? So, um, one week from today, on uh, April, or March 24th, is is the Cabin Fever Reliever uh, show at Two Harbors High School put on by KTWH Radio. Um, there is a national act this year, it's Charlie Parr. He's a singer-songwriter, plays some interesting guitar, uh, really interesting lyrics. Uh, lots of local performers. Thug is a house band, so they'll be performing throughout. Uh, it's the, the show starts at three, the doors open at two, and there will be some stuff for kids. There's going to, be a, going to be a kids music and percussion circle led by a professional music teacher and it promises to be a lot of fun. Big sale. Um, I think there will be some other donated goods uh, for sale. So tickets are on sale at the radio station, at Malka Moose, and at Cedar Coffee. And it's very reasonable. Ten bucks is the... Is the uh, Free sale price for adults, twelve dollars at the door. Seniors and kids and students is a little bit less. So and what's the age for seniors? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think it's fifty-five. Oh, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> I was asked that the other day, and I, I totally forgot to find out. But yeah, so it promises to be a very good show. I hope everybody comes. Kevin Peter, thanks, Kelly. Mark, you were lying when you said there's a ton of stuff going on here. I have a question for Jan. Okay. Do you need more eggs? No, we don't. Okay. No. <laughs> There's a lot of eggs. Um, okay, now, Cedar, you're on. Hi there, friends. I'm Phil White. This is my wife, Barbara. We're living in Dallas, Southern California, for a really beautiful holiday time. But 50 years ago, we lived in two markers with our five growing children. They were attending the Mini Papa and Johnny and Johnson School. We've been invited to return to the markers next June to help you celebrate the 50th anniversary of the formation of the United States. We have many good memories of life in two markers. Our home on 13th Avenue walks through the old fishing shacks of Eggy Bay, the Nickel Dairy Queen, the Wolves. But most of all, the foundation you gave our children to be loving and caring lives. Now we want to see some old friends and to meet some new ones. Join you and celebrate next June. Have a great time. Please rise as you are able, for Christ, for the world we sing. 